We motorcycle riders usually find ourselves surrounded by a whole community of like-minded individuals who are more than happy to give us some kind of advice. Which bike to choose, how to ride it properly, how to maintain it, which gear to buy, etc. Some people call themselves motorcycle instructors and literally make a job out of it. Can you believe it? But here is a question. How can we know if an instructor or his advice are any good? Take me for example. I have a whole channel of tips and tricks for motorcycle riders. Are they actually useful? Who knows? I might be a KGB agent in disguise. And me explaining counter steering is actually an important part of taking over the world. Of course I'm not from KGB, comrade. You can always fully trust me. In all seriousness though, motorcycling is not the safest activity to begin with, and using a bunch of bad advice can make it significantly worse. Here are some tips on how we can see if any particular riding advice is any good. This way we can judge instructors too, which can be pretty useful if you are a new rider and want to get good coaching from the start. First way to see if an advice is actually a good one is to look if the guy who gave it to us actually follows it himself and if yes, how it works out for him. For example, we can hear a suggestion that on bikes we don't need any electronics like ABS or traction control. Supposedly, they prevent us from learning how to ride properly. And for me, as a new rider, it might sound pretty reasonable. Plus, the fact that maybe I don't need to spend extra money for all those ABS gizmos sounds especially sweet. But at the same time, if that guy himself rides an ultra-modern bike filled to the brim with all the electronics known to mankind, it begs the question, why doesn't he follow his own advice? On the other hand, if he actually rides some bare-bones bike with zero electronics, Look how it works out for him. Like if in the last half a year he already high-sided two times because he locked up his rear wheel, well, maybe not having ABS is not such a great advice after all. So, if your instructor or just a supposedly more experienced friend tells you something, but at the same time either doesn't do it himself or it clearly backfired at him, don't just take his words for granted investigate further. It might be something valid, but more often it's bollocks. Secondly, when we receive some advice, we might want to ask for a clear explanation. That's what I love to do on this channel with my how to ride videos. I always try to provide a full and clear explanation to anything I tell you. For some people it can seem unimportant, but in fact this is a vital part of learning. Like, for example, in my video about counter steering, I could just say, counter steering is pretty easy, push right to go right, push left to go left. And the video would be over in 10 seconds. What's the point of this 15 minute long video then? Explanation is the point. If I just tell you, push right to go right, push left to go left, that will be just a bare statement. Which might be true, but also might be false. You would have no way to tell. Clear explanation, which makes sense, must be provided, otherwise we will always be prone to misconceptions. For example, a lot of people think that counter-steering works only at high speed and tell each other this statement with no proof or explanation whatsoever. If your instructor just states something without going into the details, ask him for a proper explanation. He must provide it, otherwise he's probably just pretending to know what he's talking about. Be careful though, because sometimes we can fall into a trap when instead of real explanation which makes sense, we get something really dodgy. Again, let's take counter steering as an example. Some people just don't believe it, despite all the explanations and demonstrations, and tell you, just lean your bike, bro. How exactly should you lean it? Which exact actions should you perform? Don't know! Just lean it! Just lean it is not a real explanation, because it does not provide clear causes and effects. With counter-steering we have a particular event, 
we turn handlebars a little. This causes our bike to temporarily lose its balance and lean to a certain degree. We have a clear cause and clear effect, unlike just leaning. Sometimes we can come across a very strange explanation. Here is one for you. Rear brake makes your bike more stable. Why? Because if we imagine our bike as a piece of rope and use our brakes together, our rope will be nice and straight. If we use only the front one without the rear, it will fold. Therefore, rear brake makes our bike more stable. Of course, it is just a complete pile of nonsense. Though the rear brake can make our bike more stable under certain conditions, it has nothing to do with ropes, which we pull apart. Long story short, demand real explanation, not some word salad without any causal relationship. See if the explanation makes sense for you. After a good clear explanation, which makes sense, the most important thing is that you can test this advice and see firsthand if it works. Again, since it's my channel, I'll use myself as an example. In my course, for literally every technique we learn, there is a clear way to isolate and test it. If I say that we can keep the bike in balance with the friction zone, we test it. First on a straight line, then in turn. By going very, very slow and saving the bike from falling with the friction zone. If I explain how target fixation and proper vision technique affects our riding, we test it by doing circles with and without cones. And the student suddenly realizes that staring at cones makes the exercise much more difficult. If I explain how body position affects lean angle for the same speed, again, we test it. Everything I teach in my course I explain, then demonstrate and then we test it. So you can see and feel how it works for yourself, not just take my sneaky KGB word for it. So, in summary, any advice you get, check if the advisor actually uses it himself and if yes, how well it works out for him. Demand a clear explanation or proof which makes sense to you. And demand some way to test it. This your instructor should be able to provide. If he tells you to do something but can't do it himself, can't explain it to you and can't give you a way to test it, it is probably shitty advice and a shitty instructor. Now let's quickly go over some red flags, which usually indicate dodgy advice. First and probably most often is argument from authority. Example. I rode for 10, 20, 30 years on a car tire. It is perfectly safe. You should do it too. Here, instead of an explanation, we get only that this guy did it for some time. It doesn't really mean much, because we lose a lot of details. Maybe he rides like once a month. Maybe he rides only on a straight line, on a highway, only in good weather. Maybe he is just lucky. Who knows? It's anecdotal evidence. It may work only with his bike and with that particular tire. Nobody really tested it. Don't fall for that. Remember to demand proper explanation. Manipulative arguments which try to play on your feelings instead of providing facts are also best being avoided. Example, first bike advice. Don't buy that PC 200cc moped, buy a real man's bike. You are one, bro. You are not a pussy, are you? Don't let other people manipulate you into something you will regret later. Always and never. Always use both brakes to stop. Never brake in a corner. Always lean your body into the turn. Never dump the clutch. This type of dogmatic advice very rarely holds true. Always both brakes? Why would I want it in this situation, for example? What good is the rear brake for me in this particular scenario? Never brake in a corner? What if there is a car? Should I just crash into it? You can see where I'm going. There are just too many different situations which can't be fully covered with one dogmatic never or always rule. There will be exceptions. Just off the top of my head I can tell you probably one always rule, which is probably always true. Always wear your helmet when riding. The rest are debatable. Again, 
always remember to demand a good explanation and never settle for simple statements. In the next video, we'll talk more about examples of most popular bad advice and misconceptions about motorcycle riding. There are quite a lot of them, but this video hopefully will help you to spot those bad advices yourself. That's it for today, ride safe and have a great day! Bye!